Hey everybody, it's Friday, November 26th, 2021, the day after Thanksgiving. I'm hoping everyone had a super fantastic holiday. I hope you spent it uh, either just doing what you love to do with your family. Even if you don't have family, I hope you just had some time off and had a chance to um, just relax and uh, just enjoy what you uh, love doing. And, and if you're working, someone that's working on the holidays or just in general, I do want to thank you for being a participant in the labor force. I know a lot of people don't want to work and there's a lot of reasons why people are choosing to remain out of the labor force. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the markets. We're going to talk about the record um, low jobless filings that we saw last week. We're going to tell you what's really behind the curtain on that one. And the markets got rocked today. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the continued um, smash and grab robberies that are happening. Will it deter Black Friday shoppers. Well, let's take a look at some news. And uh, before that, you know, our previous report, we talked about shoppers and workers in fear. Best Buy CEO came out and the Best Buy stock dropped because of all the smash and grabs that were happening. Right, but let's start right here. All the major indexes in the red today on news of something new now about the new health crisis. So could this be a buying opportunity? Well, Here's the thing about that, and I've talked about this for many years. If you're 100% invested in the markets, when there is a correction or pullback, you will not have any purchasing power to buy these dips. Uh, how big of a dip will it be? Well, we'll have to see. But there's people down in the comments that have told me, no, I'm 100% in the markets. There's no reason to hold cash. Well, here's the reason. If you see a drop, you can go in and buy at a lower cost. And uh, everything's getting hit. Cryptos, stocks. Uh, you name it. Now we do see gold actually holding up quite well, even though it did drop under 1800 here just recently. We see oil took a very big drop down to $68 a barrel. And, uh, you know, the news coming out about this health crisis is the, uh, the scare in the markets. All right, but here's the important thing that I think is going to happen out of this. I think the Fed is going to say, well, now we can no longer taper. Remember, the Fed's been talking about tapering, and, and still, we don't know what tapering really means. How much of a taper, right? Are they just going to spend $10 less in the markets, uh, $20 less? Is that tapering? Well, by definition, it is. So instead of $100 billion one day, they may do uh, $99 billion, $999,000. You know, you know what I'm saying here, 99X. So the word taper really doesn't mean anything, even though the markets were showing concern about how big the taper was going to be. And when they use such vague language, you know, there's no way into really getting a gauge on, uh, on what they're going to do. Uh, but they could use this as a reason to say, oh, look, now there's a new health crisis. Uh, we can no longer taper. Now we have to increase our market support. We have to increase the monetary stimulus. We have to increase the purchasing of the mortgage-backed securities. You see what's going on here? All right, I think you do. Right, recent news here on these robberies, we're still seeing them happening here in California and other places. And shopping centers are ramping up more security and uh, patrols, actually live um, armed patrols in some cases. We showed you in our previous video how they're putting up uh, razor wire over some shopping, uh, over, some, <laughs> over some shopping centers. And uh, it's just gotten pretty much uh, to a place that uh, most of us have never seen here in the United States in some of these shopping centers. And as the crime continues to increase, I'm uh, suspecting we're going to see more situations like this where you see goods and merchandise locked up behind uh, locked glass and, and, and casings. And uh, even some gas stations out here in some parts of uh, like Los Angeles have it where you go in there and almost everything is locked up behind some sort of cage glass or lock and key and uh, maybe most of the department stores the retail stores are going to have to do this and uh, this is likely going to push more people to online we already know that e-commerce has been really hurting some of the brick and mortar retailers and i'll add this on top of it add on top of this the labor shortage and it's going to be nowhere but rising prices who's going to pay for the uh, extra armed guards and security that these shopping centers are having to hire well it's going to be passed along to you and i the u.s consumer and how much more can the u.s consumer take uh, please let me know down in the comments what you think about this 
right? Are you personally holding back on your spending? Well, a lot of people are. Let's take a look at this next article out of CNBC here. A record number will be sitting out the season. Americans say they won't be buying holiday gifts this year. Um, predictions for holiday retail sales are rosy with the National Retail Foundation calling for record gains of 8 to 10.5% from one year ago. But a record high amount of people, or 11.5% of Americans, say they are not buying gifts this holiday season, according to a recent study. Now, what they're saying is the wealthy consumers are planning to spend more. So if we do see an increase in holiday spending, and I'm sure we will because everything is, is much higher in price. So even if more people are sitting on the sidelines, you could still see higher spending because of the rising prices. Also saying the, they're saying that the wealthy consumers are planning on spending more. So another reason why you might see more spending, even though more people are sitting on the sidelines. And we know the wealthy continue to grab a bigger, bigger a portion of all the uh, all the wealth, uh, not just in the United States, but across the globe, the top 10%, uh, their profits are exploding higher. And, you know, a lot of them are going to take advantage of this market sell-off and this buying opportunity. And uh, they'll probably know exactly when to come in and buy at the bottom. Recent article out of WAPO, supply chain issues could fuel a holiday toy craze. So are the shortages going to have people bidding up these toys online and in areas where they are available? Are people going to be go out, going out and spending? Are people going to go out and spend you know, just insane amounts of money on a toy? Um, and a lot of these toys just end up, in my house anyways, end up being donated, right? We take them into uh, to Goodwill and drop them off. Boxes full of toys, you know, only after a couple, year or two sometimes after, um, you know, the kids get them. So I, I think it's a kind of a waste. Now, let's talk about this latest headline here, pretty recent headline. Jobless claims plunged to 199,000, the lowest level since 1969. Well, let's think about this. Are we to a point now where so many people are out of the labor force that there's just not enough people to even have as filing new jobless benefits, right? How many people have been out of the labor force so long that they no longer even qualify as unemployed. We know those numbers are completely cooked. And uh, could this be the same? And also, does this add up to you? We have record numbers of people quitting their jobs. Let's take a look at this other article. All right, so this news just came out a couple weeks ago. U.S. workers quitting reaches record high. Job openings edged down in September. You know, it usually takes them a couple months to comply uh, the data on this. But does this add up to you? So uh, the lowest level since 1969, people filing new jobless claims, but yet we see record people, record numbers of people quitting their jobs. So are we being told the whole story? Uh, what's your analysis of this? Right, please let me know down in comments. I'd really like to hear from you. All right, another recent article, just to remind everyone, this is out of the journal. There were more than 11 million job openings in early November, according to the job site Indeed, well above the number of unemployed workers. Well, we know that's not true when we look at the labor force participation rate. So folks, uh, this entire bubble economy right now, it's an illusion and it's, it's cooked up. It's based on consumption and debt. And uh, we're seeing the wealth continue to be shifted up towards the top uh, upper tier of the population. And uh, there's going to be pushes for more stimulus checks. Will they get sent out? Uh, who knows? Uh, but think about this. If the economy was really so wonderful, if we're in this amazing recovery, why are we even talking about sending out more stimulus checks? Why are we seeing record lines at the food bank giveaways for food, free turkeys? Uh, why can't the Fed change course, not just taper, but actually maybe raise interest rates? All right, people, so we're going to wrap this up. We're going to continue to look for investment opportunities here in the, in the coming episodes. We're going to try to change course a little bit here on this channel. So please stay tuned. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Stay well, stay safe, keep stacking, everybody. Bye for now.